Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So in this um, video series, I will be talking about using MLflow for uh, machine learning engineering and data science projects. So machine learning development is complex as you already know if you already work in machine learning. There are um, so many parts of the machine learning life cycle. So um, initially you'd have data from probably a delta lake or some databases or some streaming brokers and you have to prepare this data and then you have to train your model and then you, you also have the challenge of um, deploying the model there are lots of um, platforms that help you to 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 make this um, machine learning pipes and life cycle easy so there is facebook learner there is Uber, there is Michelin, there's Michelangelo from Uber, there is TFX. Um, if these this, um, custom uh, ML platforms are usually um, limited to a few algorithms or frameworks. So for example, TFX, you can only use TFX if you are using TensorFlow. And if you are using something like um, SKLearn or um pytorch then you have to you look at a different platform so in the end you'll have different platforms for um different algorithms and different packages you have to use so that is the motivation for um building um mlflow coming up with for databricks coming up with mlflow so um mlflow is um runs with any library or language and it runs also anywhere so and it's also designed to be useful for if you are um, use um, building your own data science project or you are um, in, a, in an organization with probably hundreds of data scientists and you are building a project together mlflow has three main parts so there is the mlflow tracking that helps you to record and query experiments codes you store models you store artifacts data and then you also have the ml flow, flow project so the ml flow project helps you to package your final um, let's say python code or training model and then run that on any environment that you want and then you also have the ml flow models right and it gives you a variety of um, deployment tools that helps you to deploy SQLM models, TensorFlow models, PyTorch models. Yeah. So you can see how um, versatile MLflow is just from um, the. So let's look at something in the MLflow tracking. So with MLflow tracking, we will talk about all this in detail. So as you can see, there is a, um, a figure here where you have different mm -hmm. runs of your models and then you have some metrics over here. And you can easily compare the the metrics, the loss functions across your runs. So with MLflow tracking, you can store parameters, you can store metrics, you can store artifacts, um, your source code, the version of your code, any tags and notes. So it helps you to keep a proper record of what you're training, what has been trained, what was the input data, things like that. And so MLflow tracking, there is a user interface. It has a Python um, API. Um, yeah, and you can also um, use it in an organization. So if you are a lot of data scientists working on the project, you can use MLflow tracking to see what other people are, uh, metrics of other um, data scientists, and they will also see us. So this is just an example of um, code for MLflow tracking. Very easy. You open a context manager and then you just log what parameters you want to log. So log param is for logging parameters. Log metric is for logging metrics. Log artifact is for logging like files. So this is a plot that you're logging. Log model is for logging the model itself. And um, so there is also some backend stores that you can use for MLflow tracking so that anytime you restart your application, you already have um, previously saved results. So um, you can store in a file store, there's a SQL store, um, databases, Postgres, 
um, artifact repo so you can also store your artifacts in s3 back store and google storage um, so many options so mlflow gives you a diverse set of um, tools right so you're already existing for example if you are using pytorch you can use mlflow to track your um, um, to track your training or your to store your models and um, yeah you have so many um, training tools you have X, XGBoost you have TensorFlow scikit-learn you have the R tools you have Spark it's difficult to productionize um, all these tools right so MLflow um, gives you an easier way to um, put all these in production and then you have MLflow projects right so MLflow project is when you have finished um, doing all your analysis, you've trained your model, and then you'd want to get a final package of your model, of your training file, so that it can run on any environment. So then you package it as a project, and then you can run it on local execution or in the cloud. So that's it. You can package um, your project and then you can um, run it anywhere you want to so this is an example of an mlflow project which has been packaged as a conda um, file you can package it as a conda file or a docker um, file so this has been packaged as a docker uh, as a conda file so um, and it's written in yaml so you have the entry points and then you have um, what kind of um, parameters you are using and then what is the the main um, command when this file is run. We'll look at all these in details later. So these are all the frameworks and there are more frameworks that you can run on MLflow. So you can see the most popular ones already run on MLflow. And then you also have um, MLflow models. So uh, we have three main components in MLflow. So MLflow models, MLflow <laughs> tracking, and then MLflow projects. So MLflow models helps you to deploy your models in production. And this is an example of the YAML file that will help you to deploy your, your models. And yeah, we will we'll talk about all these um, components um, in more detail. So thanks for watching and uh, keep watching.